Today we're going to be learning about how to simplify algebraic expressions that have mixed operations. We're going to start off by just reminding you about bed mass, which is how we work out the order of operations. So remember when you are presented with a problem that has multiple different operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents, brackets, all of that, then you need to do it in a specific order. You can't just calculate from left to right. You have to calculate certain things first and um, in a certain order. So bed mass helps us to remember what order we're going to be calculating in. So we've got B, which represents brackets. Then we've got E, which represents exponents. Then we've got D and M which represent division and multiplication. And then we've got A and S, which are addition and subtraction. Okay, and remember, these go together. So division and multiplication can happen simultaneously. And same thing with the addition and subtraction. They also go together. So you can do addition and subtraction simultaneously from left to right as well. Okay, so that is the order that we are going to be using when we are doing our calculations. So now let's have a look at an example where we're going to actually use this in, with an algebraic expression. So I'm going to make this big so that you can see it nicely and copy it down. So we've got negative 3 ac squared, then in brackets, 5b cubed, c cubed, plus ab squared, c, minus 4c squared, minus, then we've got a big fraction over here, with negative 16, a, b, a to the power of 4, b to the power of 5, c to the power of 5, plus 2a cubed b to the power of 6 c to the power of 7 minus 14a cubed b cubed c to the power of 6 all over negative the square root of 4a squared b to the power of 6. So let's see how we would go about simplifying this expression. So first of all if we look at our order of operations for bed mass, we've got B for brackets. That would mean that anything inside brackets that can be simplified needs to be simplified first. But if you look inside these brackets over here, there are no like terms. I can't really do anything inside there at the moment. And remember, a fraction behaves like brackets. So this over here is also, we would do it in this step if there was anything that we could do to it. But again, there are no like terms there that I can add and subtract. So I can't do anything for the b for inside brackets. Now we're going to go on to exponents. Now exponents includes both exponents and roots. Okay, roots are also going to come into that. So I'm going to do this over here where I've got 3ac squared squared. So I need to simplify that exponent over there and I need to simplify this root over here as well. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Okay, so let's go and do that. So first of all, this is going to become negative 3ac squared squared. If I square a negative, it becomes positive. 3 squared is 9. Then I have a squared c to the power of 4. So that's what you should get when you square that bracket over there. And then this is going to stay as it is for now. Now this, you can write in brackets if you want to, you don't have to, because there's nothing else I can really do with that at the moment. Okay, so I have 5b cubed, c cubed, plus ab squared c, minus 4c squared, minus, now I've got my bracket, my fraction over here. Again, the top I can't really do anything with, so it's going to stay as it is for now. And that is all over what was in a root sign, but now we are going to get rid of that square root over there. We're going to simplify it. So I've got negative now over here. 
The negative is going to stay negative because it's not being affected at all by the square root at all. So I don't have to worry about it. It just stays as it is. Then I've got the square root of 4, which is 2. The square root of a squared is a. And the square root of b to the power of 6 is b cubed. Remember, we are using our rule over here that where you have a root, we divide the exponent by the root. Now, you can't see over here, but this is a square root, which means that there's a little 2 over here. So we're dividing by 2. And please remember that for this number over here, even though it looks like we divided by 2, that isn't actually what we did. We took the square root of 4. We didn't divide by 4, but divide by 2. And over here, we used our rule of raising a power to a power. So we took the exponent you couldn't see, which was 1, and multiplied by 2. And this one, we multiplied by 2. This over here, we squared because it's not an exponent. So we don't use that rule for this one. You could make it 3 squared and then change it to 9. Okay, so that's now our first step where we have done our exponents. Now we're going to go on to multiplication and division, which are done at the same time. So over here, I've got multiplication in this term. And in this term, I've got division. So I'm going to go and simplify both of those. Okay, so this one, when we are doing multiplication here, I've got an example of a monomial being multiplied by a polynomial. So I need to multiply this monomial into my polynomial. Remember, we multiply by each term inside there. Okay, so for the first one, I've got 9a squared c to the power of 4 times 5b cubed c cubed. Okay, so 9 times 5 is 45. Then a squared b cubed c to the power of 7. And here we are using our rule that where we are multiplying powers with the same base, then we add the exponents. Then I've got plus 9. a squared times a is a cubed. Then there's no b here, so it's b squared. And then c to the power of 4 times c is c to the power of 5. And then I've got minus 4 times 9 is 36. a squared there's no b's in either of them, so I go straight to c to the power of 4 times c to the power of 2 is c to the power of 6. Okay, so that's what you should get when you multiply out those brackets. Now over here, if you remember from when we were doing dividing a polynomial by a monomial, we said that you need to be careful if you've got a minus in front of your fraction, you need to put it in brackets before you split that fraction up. That's what I'm going to be doing now, so I'm going to be splitting this fraction up into three separate fractions, all with that same base over there. So I've got negative 16. I'm going to struggle with space here, but we'll try. a to the power of 4, b to the power of 5, c to the power of 5, over negative 2ab cubed. Then I've got a plus. 2a cubed, b to the power of 6, c to the power of 7, over negative 2ab cubed. Then I've got a minus. 17 a cubed b cubed c to the power of 6 over negative 2 a b cubed. Okay, so remember when we have a fraction like this, we've got more than one term in the numerator, but one term in the denominator, we split it up and we, sep we simplify each of them separately, making sure that when we split it up, the denominator is the same for all of them as what it was originally. Okay, so now I'm going to go and simplify all of those. This, for now, is going to stay as it is. I'm not doing anything with this yet. Okay, so for our first fraction, I've got a negative divided by negative is going to make a positive. Then I've got 16 divided by 2. 2 goes in there 8 times, 2 goes in there once. 8 to the power of 4 over a becomes a cubed over 1. A to the b to the power of 5 over b cubed becomes b squared over 1. And c to the power of 5 doesn't have anything to simplify with. Now remember we are using over here our law that says when we divide powers with the same base, we subtract their exponents. So that's what I was doing over here. I was subtracting the exponents. I was saying 4 minus 1 and that gave me the 3. I was saying 5 minus 3 and that gave me the 2. Okay, so this term gave me 8 a cubed b squared c to the power of 5. 
Okay, plus, or no, not plus, because I have a positive divided by negative gives me minus. Then I'm going to simplify this. I've got 2 and 2. Those cancel completely, giving me 1 and 1. Then I've got a cubed and a. That gives me a squared over 1. b to the power of 6 over b cubed gives me b to the power of 3 over 1. And again, the c to the power of 7 has nothing to simplify with, so it's going to stay as it is. So that's going to be 1 a squared b cubed c to the power of 7. But remember, when we have a coefficient of 1 with variables, we don't need to write the 1. So I'm just going to write a squared b cubed c to the power of 7. Then I've got a negative divided by a negative. That gives me a positive. This was supposed to be 14, not 17. Okay, so that's 14. I'm not sure where I got 17 from. Okay, so I've got 14 over 2. 2 goes in there 7 times. 2 goes in there once. Here I've got a cubed over a. That gives me a squared over 1. b cubed over b cubed. Those cancel completely. And then I have the c to the power of 6. Again, it can't simplify with anything, so it stays as it is. So that leaves me with 7 a squared c to the power of 6. And now, I close my bracket, and now we're going to go and get rid of these brackets. Now that we've got to this point, I want to get rid of the brackets, and then I want to see if there are any like terms that I'll be able to simplify to do my last step, which is my addition and subtraction. So I've done, I didn't have to do anything for the brackets, because there was nothing I could do inside the brackets. The next step was exponents, which included roots. Then I had division and multiplication. That's what I've just done now. Now we're going to go and see if we can do addition and subtraction. But we still actually have one little bit of multiplication to do left. And that is this over here, where I have to get rid of these brackets. Because I've got a minus 1 that you can't see, but it is there. That I need to multiply into the brackets. So remember, when we have just a minus in front of the brackets, it's actually negative 1. And we're going to multiply that in. And that is going to affect all of the terms inside that bracket. Okay, so over here I have got, these are staying the same, so I've still got 45 a squared b cubed c to the power of 7 plus 9 a cubed b squared c to the power of 5 minus 36 a squared c to the power of 6. And then when I multiply the negative 1 in, this is going to become negative 8 a cubed b squared c to the power of 5, and negative times a negative is positive, so it's going to become plus a squared b cubed c to the power of 7, and then a negative times a positive is negative, so it's going to be minus 7a squared c to the power of 6. Now that I've got that, I can now go and look and see if there are any like terms that I can simplify. So I've got over here a squared b cubed c to the power of 7, over here, I also have a squared b cubed c to the power of 7. So those are like terms. Over here, I have got a cubed b squared c to the power of 5. And over there, I also have a cubed b squared c to the power of 5. So those are like terms. And then over here, I have got a squared c to the power of 6 and a squared c to the power of 6. So those are like terms as well. Okay, so now I can go and simplify those. So first I'm going to do these ones over here, and that gives me 45 plus 1 is 46. a squared b cubed c to the power of 7. Then I'm going to do these ones over here. That's a cubed b squared c to the power of 5. I've got 9, and I'm subtracting 8. That leaves me with just 1. So that's going to be plus 1, or just plus a cubed b squared c to the power of 5. Remember, we don't write the 1 if we have got variables that follow it. And then, finally, I have got my a squared c to the power of 6's there and there. So I've got negative 36 minus 7, and that gives me negative 43 a squared c to the power of 6. And that's what you should get for that question over there. Right, so now I'm going to give you one that you're going to work on for yourself. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question.
Okay, so let's see how that question went. So in this question, you've got a square root that contains two terms. Now, if you look at those two terms, they are like terms, which means that we can simplify what is inside the square root. Now, remember that a square root or any root will act as brackets. So anything that is inside there that you can simplify will fall into the category of the B over here. Okay, so we need to do that first if we can do that. Okay, so over here, I've got 100 x to the power of 18 y to the power of 20 z to the power of 14 minus 64 x to the power of 18 y to the power of 20 z to the power of 14. Now I have to simplify that first before I can use the before I can do the root. Okay, Bedmas says I have to do that first because that is basically inside brackets. It doesn't you don't see brackets there, but the square root sign acts as brackets. So that's going to give me 100 minus 64 is 36 x to the power of 18 y to the power of 20, z to the power of 14, and that is all being square rooted. Now we can go and simplify that, and that will give us the square root of 36, which is 6, x to the power of, then the square root of x to the power of 18, I divide the 18 by 2, and that gives me 9. Then I divide the 20 by 2, and that gives me y to the power of 10, then I divide 14 by 2, and that gives me z to the power of 7. So for question A, you should get x, oh, 6, x to the power of 9, y to the power of 10, z to the power of 7. Okay, so now I'm going to give you another question that you're going to work on. And again, I'm giving you two minutes to, to work on this question. Right, so let's see how that question went. So in this one, we have got 2ab squared, then in brackets, 12a cubed minus 9a cubed b minus 15b squared. And then all of that is over ab squared minus 4ab squared. So Bedmas says that the first thing we need to do is simplify anything that's inside brackets if we can. Now, if you look over here, these brackets I can't simplify because there's nothing that I can do. They are, they are not like terms. However, at the bottom of a fraction, remember, a fraction divides the top and the bottom into basically sets of brackets. So this over here is as though it was in a set of brackets. You can't see the brackets, but they are still held together as though they're in a set of brackets. So I need to do this over here now because it is, those are like terms, so I can simplify that. So I've got to keep this as it is, 2ab squared, and then 12a cubed minus 9a cubed b minus 15b squared. All of that is going to stay as it is for now while I am simplifying the denominator because I can 
Simplify that. AB squared minus 4AB squared gives me negative 3AB squared. Okay, so once I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to do my multiplication and my division. Okay, now when I do this, I actually have a couple of options. I can simplify that with that, but we're going to go and do a multiplication first, get it into our three terms and then split up our fraction like you are used to doing. You will learn about cancelling individual factors like that later on. Okay, so for now, I'm going to keep it, um, I'm going to multiply this out over here. So I've got 2ab squared, I'm going to multiply into the brackets, remember we are multiplying over here, a monomial by a polynomial, so I need to multiply by every term inside those brackets over there. So that gives me 2ab squared times 12a cubed gives me 24 a to the power of 4b squared. Then I've got 2ab squared times negative 9a cubed b, that gives me minus 18, a times a cubed is a to the power of 4, b squared times b is b cubed. And then over here I've got a positive times a negative is negative, 2 times 15 is 30, a is going to stay a, and then b squared times b squared is b to the power of 4. That is all over the same denominator that I had over there of negative 3 a b squared. Once I've got to this point, I'm then going to split my fraction up and I'm going to have this 24 a to the power of 4 b squared over negative 3 a b squared. Then I've got minus 18 a to the power of 4 b cubed over negative 3 a b squared. And then I've got another minus 30 a b to the power of 4 over negative 3ab squared. Okay, so I've got three separate fractions now, all with the same denominator that I started with. And now I can go and simplify each of those fractions individually. So over here, a positive divided by negative is going to be negative. 24 divided by 3, 3 goes into there 8 times and there once. a to the power of 4 over a, that gives me a cubed over 1, and those cancel completely. So that gives me negative 8a cubed. That's all you should have got from that first term. The next one, I have a negative and a negative. That's going to give me a positive. A negative divided by negative is a, is a positive. So that's plus. Then 18 divided by 3. 3 goes in there 6 times and in there once. a to the power of 4 and a gives me a cubed over 1. And b cubed over b squared gives me b over 1. So this term over here is going to be positive 6a cubed b. And then the last one, again, I've got minus divided by minus, that becomes plus. Then I have 30 divided by 3 is 10 and 1. a over a gives me 1 and 1 because they cancel completely. And then b, squared, b to the power of 4 over b squared, that's 1 and this is b squared left over. Okay, so that gives me 10b squared. So that's what you should have got for question B. Negative uh, 8a cubed plus 6a cubed b plus 10b squared. Right, now we're going to go on to the next question. And you once again have two minutes to work on this question.
Okay, so let's see how that question went. So in this question, you had the square root of 9x squared y to the power of 6 plus 4xy cubed all squared. Okay, so first of all, inside here, remember this behaves like brackets, okay, but we also have our rule for bed mass that anything that's inside brackets, we need to apply bed mass to that as well if, if necessary. So in this case, yes, this behaves like brackets, but I can't simplify that because those aren't like terms. But I also can't go ahead straight away and square root it because I've got a plus inside here and I can't do that. If I've got a plus or a minus inside here, I can't square root or square or anything like that. I have to first get it so that there is only one term inside that root sign. So what I need to do is I need to apply bed mass to the stuff inside here. Now, bed mass says that inside here, if there's anything I can do inside those brackets, I must do that first, I can't. The next step is to do those that exponent over there. So I've got to get rid of this square over here. So this is going to stay as it is for now. 9x squared y to the power of 6. I can't square root that now. I have to first simplify this. That gives me, over here, 4 squared is 16 x squared is x squared and y cubed squared is y to the power of 6 and that is still all under the square root sign and now you'll see that these are in fact like terms which means that I can now simplify it so that I can then do the square root so now this is where I am able to do my addition and subtraction inside my brackets which are my square root sign okay so that gives me 9 plus 16 is 25 x squared y to the power of 6 and that I still am going to have to square root. I haven't done that yet. Okay, so now that I've got one term inside my square root sign, now I can do the square rooting. So the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x squared is x and the square root of y to the power of 6 is y cubed. So that's what you should have got for question C. Right, now I'm going to give you another one. For this question, you're going to need a little bit more time, so I'm going to give you three minutes.
Right, so let's see how you do with that question. So the, this question over here is a fraction, obviously. We've got a bracket that's being squared, we've got a cube root, and we've got a bracket that's being cubed in the denominator. If you look inside the brackets and in the root, each one of them only has one term. So I don't have to worry about doing anything inside them. Okay, so my first step of brackets, I don't have to worry about. I can go straight on to my next step of exponents, which includes roots. Okay, so first I'm going to do this over here, sorting out that square. So I'm going to square the negative, that makes it positive. Then I've got a squared. b cubed squared becomes b to the power of 6. And same thing, c cubed so c cubed squared also becomes c to the power of 6. Okay, so that's that one over there. Then I have got, I'm going to put a dot over here just to show that it's, I'm multiplying because I'm going to be dropping that cube root sign over there. Now I've got the cube root of negative. Now when you cube root a negative, it stays negative. Okay, so that's still going to be negative. Then I've got the cube root of a to the power of 9. Now when I take the cube root of a power, I must divide my exponent by that number. So it's 3 divided by 3 is 3. So that's going to be a to the power of 3 or a cubed. Then b to the power of 27, I'm going to divide the 27 by 3. That gives me b to the power of 9. And then c to the power of 12, I'm going to divide by 3. And that gives me c to the power of 4. Okay, so that's what you should get over there. Then our denominator, we've got in brackets negative a b to the power of 5 c to the power of 4 and I'm cubing that. Now when you cube a negative it stays negative. Remember if you are taking a negative and applying an odd exponent it stays negative. If you apply an even exponent like this one then it changes to positive. So this one is going to stay negative. Then I've got a cubed b to the power of 5 cubed, I multiply and that gives me 15, so it's b to the power of 15, and then c to the power of 4 cubed is c to the power of 12, multiplying the 4 and the 3. Okay, so that's what you should get after you have done your exponents with your roots. The next thing we're going to do is multiplication and division. Now remember, they can happen together. I can either multiply this simplify it and then do my division or I can go and cancel things out straight away okay it doesn't really matter which way you do it so I'm going to go and cancel out straight away so I'm going to have over here I can see that I've a cubed and a cubed so I can cancel those straight away like that giving me one and one I could have cancelled the a squared with the a cubed and then cancelled the, the leftover a with that one but this is quicker because they cancel out completely so if you see um things that are exactly the same at the top and the bottom that can cancel, cancel those rather than doing parts of this and parts of that if you can. Okay, so over here I've got b to the power of 6 and b to the power of 9 at the top, and over here I've got b to the power of 15. Please take note, even though I've got a minus over here, I cancel, cancel, because this is multiplication, so I'm multiplying that by that. Okay, so I cancel, cancel. Also, I've got a negative divided by negative, so let's just simplify those. When you divide negative by negative, it becomes positive. So I don't have to worry about those minuses anyway. Okay, so I'm going to do my b's now. So I've got b to the power of 6 and b to the power of 15. That gives me 1, and that gives me b to the power of 9. 15 minus 6 gives me 9, so b to the power of 9. And remember, when you have a higher exponent at the bottom, that is where you're going to end up with your leftover b's in this case. Then I've got b to the power of 9 and b to the power of 9. Now those are going to cancel each other out completely, giving me 1 and 1. Then I've got c to the power of 6 and c to the power of 4 at the top and c to the power of 12 at the bottom. Again, I'm going to have to do in two parts here. So I've got c to the power of 6, c to the power of 12. That gives me 1 and c to the power of 6. 12 minus 6 is 6. Then I'm going to simplify this over here. That gives me 1 and c to the power of 2 or c squared. So let's have a look and see what all we are left with from this whole fraction. So I've got at the top, first of all it's positive because I had a negative divided by negative is positive. Okay, then I've got at the top a squared times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So it's just a squared at the top. And then at the bottom of my fraction, I've got 1 times 1 times c squared. So it's just c squared. So this whole thing just came out to a squared over c squared. Right, question D, the next one that you're going to be doing. Or question E, rather. 
Okay, so once again, this is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this question. Okay, so let's see how that question went. So for this question, we had a set of big square brackets. Inside those, we had 15 d to the power of 7 e to the power of 6 f cubed minus 5 d cubed f. And then in brackets, again, smaller brackets, inside the bigger brackets, we've got 2 d squared e cubed f squared. Okay, so now the first thing we have to do here is we have to see what I can do inside the brackets. So inside the big square brackets, I've got all of this. Now there's a whole lot of stuff to do over here. So I have to apply bed mass to what's inside those square brackets before I can then go outside those square brackets. Okay, so inside the square brackets, let's see, is there anything I can do inside brackets inside there? So inside these brackets over here, no, I can't do anything. It's just one term, there's nothing I can do. So then I go on to exponents, which is this over here. So I'm going to simplify this bracket with the exponents and then I will go on to multiplication and division. So first this is all going to stay the same except for that over there. So I've got 15 d to the power of 7 e to the power of 6 f cubed minus 5 d cubed f. None of that is changing and then over here I have got 2 squared is 4 d squared squared is d to the power of 4 e cubed squared is e to the power of 6 and f squared is f squared. Okay, and then that is being squared. So now we can see over here I have got inside my big square brackets a term minus another term that is made up of a couple of things being multiplied together. So now my next thing I have to do is multiplication. I have to simplify this over here. Okay, 
So that is still going to stay the same. The square is still going to stay the same. I'm just working on this at the moment. Okay, so over here I've got a negative times a positive is negative. 5 times 4 is 20. d cubed times d to the power of 4 is d to the power of 7. Then I've got e to the power of 6. There's no e here, but I have to do that over there in alphabetical order. Then I've got f times f squared is f cubed. Okay, so now I've got to the point where inside my brackets I've got two terms and both of them have, they're as simple as they can get. I can't simplify those terms any further. Now I can go and I can work on my addition and subtraction. I can check, are those like terms? That's d to the power of 7, e to the power of 6, f to the power of 3. Here, d to the power of 7, e to the power of 6, f to the power of 3. They are identical in terms of their variables. So yes, they are like terms. So now I can go and I can simplify that. So I have got 15 minus 20 gives me negative 5. d to the power of 7, e to the power of 6, f cubed. And that needs to be squared now. Now that I've got to the point where there is only one term and it's in its simplest form, inside those brackets, I can now go and simplify my exponent. So my exponent is a square, which means I need to square everything inside here. When I square a negative number, remember, we, when we raise a negative to an even exponent, it's going to change to positive. So that's going to become positive over there. Then 5 squared is 25. d to the power of 7 squared is d to the power of 14. e to the power of 6 squared is e to the power of 12. And f cubed squared is f to the power of 6. So that's what you should have got for question E. And now we're going to go on to the last one. And once again, this is a bit more complicated. I'm going to be giving you again three minutes for this question.
Okay, so let's see how that last question went. So in this question, we have got a big fraction. In our numerator, we've got the square root of, in brackets, 3x squared y cubed, and that's squared. Then we've also got minus 2x y to the power of 5 x cubed y and plus 9x to the power of 4 y to the power of 6 and all of that is under that square root sign then in our denominator we've got a set of brackets negative 4x cubed y squared z and that is squared then i've got minus 2x to the power of 4 y to the power of 5 times 5x squared z squared so this is really quite a complicated question that we're going to be working on over here there is a lot that we're going to have to do we need to make sure that we do all of it in the right order so the first thing we're going to do is look inside this square root sign. Remember, this acts as brackets. I have to do anything that's inside here first. But because there is so much going on in here, I have to apply bed mass inside here as well. So inside here, I have got a set of brackets, but I can't do anything with it. There's nothing, there's no pluses or minus or anything that I need to do in there. So I'm now going to go onto my exponents over there. And that's going to give me 3 squared is 9. x squared squared is x to the power of 4 y cubed squared is y to the power of 6. Okay, then I've got minus 2xy to the power of 5 times x cubed y plus 9x to the power of 4y to the power of 6. Okay, so at the top over here, I have just done that exponent. This is still under the square root sign. I can't get rid of that until I have reached the point of simplifying all of this so I only have one term inside the square root sign. Then at the bottom of my fraction, I also have to do this exponent over here. Remember, the, this acts as brackets, so I have to apply bed mass inside here. My exponent over here, I have to simplify now. So that's going to give me a negative squared is positive. So that's going to be positive 16. X to the power of 3 times 2 is 6. Y to the power of 2 squared, or 2 to the power of, Y to the power of 2 times 2, which is 4. And z squared is z squared. Okay, so that is that one sim simplified. Now I'm going to just write down what I've got over here. Minus 2x to the power of 4, y to the power of 4, times 5x squared, z squared. So the first thing I did was I did my exponents over there and over there. Now I'm going to go to my next step, which is multiplication and division. So over here, I have got inside here, multiplication to simplify there and inside here I've got multiplication to simplify over there so I'm going to do that now as well okay so I've got 9 x to the power of 4 y to the power of 6 then I've got a negative times a positive is negative 2 x times x cubed is x to the power of 4 y to the power of 5 times y is y to the power of 6 plus 9 x to the power of 4 y to the power of 6. Now this is still all under my square root sign. I can't get rid of that until I have got all of this to one term. And in my denominator, I also need to do that multiplication that I've got over here. So this is going to stay as it is for now. I've got 16 x to the power of 6 y to the power of 4 z squared minus times plus is minus 2 times 5 is 10 x to the power of 4 times x squared is x to the power of 6. Then I've got y to the power of 4 and z squared. Okay, so once I've got that, I can now go and simplify my addition and subtraction. I've got addition and subtraction that I can simplify over there. If you look, those are all like terms. So I can simplify them now. So I've got 9 minus 2 plus 9. That gives me 16. x to the power of 4, y to the power of 6. And that is still needs to be square rooted. I haven't done the square rooting yet. That is over. Over here, x to the power of 6, y to the power of 4, z squared. x to the power of 6, y to the power of 4, z squared. Those are also like terms, so I can simplify that as well. So I've got 16 minus 10. That gives me 6, x to the power of 6, y to the power of 4, z squared. Okay, so now I've got to this point. The next thing I need to do is I need to do this exponent. I don't have any exponents that I need to do over here, but this exponent, which is actually a root, I need to simplify now. Okay, so that gives me the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared. And the square root of y to the power of 6 is y cubed. That is over... 
x to the power of 6, y to the power of 4, z squared. Now that I've got this, I have no other square roots or, or squares or anything I have to worry about. Now I can go and do my division, my simplification of my division. So I can simplify my fraction of here. So I've got 2 goes in there, 2 goes in there. So 2 goes in there twice and 2 goes in there three times. x to the power of 6 over, or x to the power of 2 over x to the power of 6 gives me 1 over x to the power of 4 y cubed over y to the power of 4 gives me 1 over y and then there's nothing to simplify the z squared with so it stays as it is. So what I end up with for this question is 2 over 3x to the power of 4y and that's what you should have got for question f. And that is how we simplify algebraic expressions that involve mixed operations. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.